This is a good Hess's Law example. My thought process whenever I start a Hess's Law question is I want to identify what makes each of these component reactions special. So my goal reaction is four moles of carbon as graphite plus two moles of hydrogen yields two moles of this C2H2 compound. And I'm gonna figure out what the delta H for that reaction would be. Um, just so that I can talk about it a little bit uh, less annoyingly. C2H2 is called acetylene. So when I talk about C2H2, I'm just gonna call it acetylene, and then that way I don't have to keep saying C2H2. So I need four moles of graphite. Here in reaction A, I have graphite, and if I look nowhere else, do I see graphite? So the only place I'm gonna be able to get that four moles of graphite is in reaction A. I need graphite as a reactant. Reaction A has graphite as a reactant. I need four moles. Reaction A only gives me one mole of graphite. Easy to fix. I multiply reaction A by four. That means carbon by four, oxygen by four, carbon dioxide by four, and the delta H value gets multiplied by four. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that times four, times four, times four, and 1393.5, or 393.5 times four is 1574. Negative 1574 kilojoules. Next up, so that should take care of that. I need two moles of hydrogens. If I look through all of my reactions, the only place with hydrogen is here, reaction B. I need two moles. Reaction B only gives me one mole. Multiply everything by two. So doubled, one half times two gives me one mole of oxygen, two moles of water, and that means 285.8 times two negative 571.6 kilojoules. Then reaction C, it is my only place where I get acetylene. The only place C2H2 shows up is here in reaction C. I need two moles, reaction C has two moles. I need it as a product. Here it's listed as a reactant. I'm gonna have to flip reaction C. Rather than take the time to erase it, I'm just gonna cross it out. When I reverse the reaction, that changes the sign on the delta H. So when I flip the reaction, it's still going to be 2,598.8 kilojoules, but it will become a positive 2,598 kilojoules. I will just rewrite this real quick. Four carbon dioxides plus two waters form two acetylenes and five oxygens. At delta H is positive 2598. The goal is for me to add reaction A, reaction B, reaction C together and end up with this, my goal reaction. If I can add A and B and C and get the goal reaction, I can add delta H for A, delta H for B, delta H for C together and find the delta H for that goal reaction. A lot of things are gonna need to cancel out. Your oxygens, your carbon dioxides, your 
oxygens, waters, carbon dioxide. So it looks like about it. Two ways to do this. You can cancel them from the component reactions or you can consolidate all the reactants together, all the products together, and then do your canceling. Because I'm a little bit pressed for space, I'm gonna cancel them from the component reactions before I then write my goal reaction. But you'll notice here we have four moles of CO2 as a product. Down here we have four moles of CO2 as a reactant. So that will cancel out. We have two moles of water as a product, two moles of water as a reactant. So that is going to also cancel out. Then what is left? We've got these oxygens, five moles of oxygen on a product, four in reaction A, one in reaction B. So that's five, whoa, that's five moles of oxygen as a reactant, five moles of oxygen as a product. So that will cancel out. And that leaves me with the only reactants are four moles of carbon and two moles of hydrogen. What I want plus two moles of hydrogen and hopefully my only product left standing is the acetylene. It is two moles of the acetylene. So we're combining reaction A, reaction B, and reaction C gets me my goal reaction. I can now combine delta H for A, delta H for B, delta H for C, and find the delta H for the goal reaction. Five ninety-eight point eight minus five seventy-one point six, and I get four fifty-three point two, and that's positive four fifty-three point two. That means that the formation of acetylene from elemental carbon and elemental hydrogen is an endothermic process. Energy has to go in in order to make that happen. If I was doing this inside of something where I could measure the energy that was involved, I would expect the surroundings to this reaction to get colder because energy is going to be being pulled away. And as that energy is pulled away, the environment will lose energy. And we describe that as getting colder, temperature dropping. Um, and then also just kind of conceptually thinking about it, the enthalpies of formation for elements are zero. So we go from zero, zero to a positive 453.2 for this reaction. So I would think that whatever compound this is, the C2H2, is a highly unstable compound because you actually have to put energy in to form it. Most compounds, when they're formed from elements, there's a decrease in energy. They're becoming more stable. This is less stable. So just kind of the meaning behind what these numbers tell us.